Okay, so today I wanted to go over how to make the simulation free boiling water effect. Now, does it look as good as a simulation? No, but does it look good enough? Well, let's see. So to start things off, we've got our kettle. And if you want to follow along, I actually grabbed this from the content browser and just made a few changes, but I'm just going to move forward from here. So first thing we need is our fluid container. So I'm going to drop in a cube and scale it down. This is going to be our, the basis of our fluid. I'm just going to arrange it roughly where I want the boiling water to be. The top of this cube is going to be the surface of the water. Okay, so we got our cube. I'm going to hide the kettle for now because I don't really need it. Uh, same thing for the ground. So first thing we need is to add some bubbles. And to do that, I'm going to go up to simulate and grab an emitter. I, I know I said this was simulation free, but we're not going to be doing much to this emitter. I promise. Uh, let me hide our dome light too. Okay, so we've got our particles moving through. Now we're going to make a cloner. And we're going to put a sphere in the cloner. And that's, of course, too big. So we're going to scale that down. And in our cloner object, we're just going to go to object, set your mode from grid to object. And we're going to clone onto our emitter. So now we have smears moving along with the emitter. Great. These are on way too long. So I'm going to set the lifetime down to like 60, maybe 50 frames just for now. Um, spheres are still a little too big, so let's scale them down some more. This doesn't look very natural because they start at full speed. So instead of using the speed built into our emitter, I'm going to drop that to zero. And we're going to use, go to simulate, forces, we're going to use a gravity force. And we're just going to set that to a negative number, like let's say 10. Maybe a little faster, maybe 20. So you can see, rather than just immediately starting at full speed, it starts really slow and picks, picks up. Um, I'm going to move this a little closer to the base of our, of our water. Okay. And I want these to live a little bit longer so they go all the way through our fluid. And let's go ahead and give our cloner a little bit of randomness. So go to our fields, or our... Uh, Effectors, we're going to do a random effector. Go to our parameters, turn off position. We want to change the scale. Uh, we're going to do absolute scale and we'll say 0.5. So it can be either 50% uh, bigger or 50% smaller and everything in between. And, you know, of course, that's still making our bubbles a little too big still. Okay, let's bring back our kettle. Let's check kind of where some of this is happening. So let, I'm going to raise this up a little bit to be closer to the bottom of the kettle because I want to see these bubbles right as they appear. So I'm going to raise our emitter up a little bit. Let's organize this real quick. So I like to add in a null and drop everything related to our particle system into that null. Uh, and I'm just going to call this particles. And if you want to be really organized about it, um, I like to go down to basic and switch this um, from load preset to folder. And that way it just gives a nice visual difference of, okay, this is a container of a bunch of things. Okay, so let's turn our kettle back off. Um, we need to get these bubbles to actually interact with our fluid. So we go to our cube, I'm actually going to go to name this fluid. And first things first, I'm going to go to our quick shading with lines. We need more geometry on our cube to uh, interact with the bubbles. So I'm going to give us, say, 50 and X, 50 and Z. That's probably too many. Let's we'll start with 30, and we can always go up from there. Um, you don't need any segments in Y, but it could help with the structure of it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it like three for now. OK, now to make this start acting like some fluid. We're going to click on our fluid and go to our deformers, and we're going to find our collision deformer. If you hold shift and click on the deformer, it automatically makes it a child of the thing you had it clicked on. So right now that's not doing anything because uh, it doesn't know what it wants to collide with. So we'll go to our colliders, and we're just going to drag and drop our cloner right here. And there we go. Starting to look like something. By default, intersect works fine, but there's a bunch of different methods of uh, collision if you want to try to mess with them. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave that alone. So it's going through and it's pushing our the surface of this thing up pretty well. It's snapping immediately back to its original state. So to adjust that, we're going to change restore shape down a little bit. So now there should be a little bit more of a delay. 
There we go. So now, rather than just instantly going back to its original shape, there's just a little bit of a delay to it. Okay, now it's getting there. Still doesn't look very liquid. Click on our fluid box, and we're going to go to another deformer. We're going to want to use our jiggle deformer. And really important, make sure the jiggle deformer happens after the collision. There we go. So now we have some ripples going on. And you can adjust all these settings. For now, honestly, the defaults are pretty good. Um, maybe lower the stiffness so that it just kind of has a little more um, spread to it. But generally, uh, you don't really need to mess with these settings too much. Uh, maybe I'll give it less springs. Yeah, there we go. Overall, pretty good. There is some weird geometry going on here um, where some of the balls, the spheres intersect. Um, some ways to uh, adjust that. The reason it's kind of blowing apart is some of these spheres are intersecting with each other as they're intersecting with the cube, and that's causing some problems. So a way to adjust that is if I go to our cloner, we're going to grab a, another effector. We're going to want push apart. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back into here. And I'm going to set the push apart effector down to say like one centimeter. I don't need much. Um, and all the push apart does is it just uh, looks at nearby clones and tries to keep them from intersecting. So that should help with some of it. I don't want to push it apart too much though. So that's the only issue. But that's okay. Uh, later we're going to do some stuff that'll get rid of some of those problems anyway. So final step you need to make this look like actual liquid is we're going to grab a volume builder. And we're going to grab our fluid. This will be our base for the fluid. And let's go ahead and change the voxel size to something you know, like two, maybe one. Careful not to make this too small or you'll break your computer for sure. Um, I think 0.5 is probably fine. OK, and then we need our particle system. It's going to go in there as well. So right now, it's just creating more geometry on the spheres. But if we set these spheres to subtract, well, now it's actually subtracting from the geometry, like a Boolean, but way more efficient. And we're going to better see this if I mesh it. So we had our volume builder. Next step is a volume mesher. And if I hold the Alt key while selecting the mesher, it'll automatically make it a parent of the thing I had selected. So now it's converting all those voxels into geometry. So now we have this you know, pretty robust looking uh, fluid simulation. All done with a very basic particle setup. And you can see that there are actually bubbles. In fact, if I were to drop on like a glass material and hit render, you can see the bubbles uh, through the fluid. So let's bring back our kettle. So I want my cube to be a little, looks like it's just a tiny bit above the bottom. So I want this to be lower. Uh, one little gotcha with this setup is if I try to move this cube, it's not going to work. It's because these deformers are, uh, you know, frame dependent. So I'm just going to turn these off for now and then move my fluid where I want it and then just turn them right back on. And don't worry about that. We'll go back to frame zero. Everything snaps back to where it should be. So I'm going to turn off our fluid for now. And we just need to generate a quick and easy container. So this particular um, model that I'm using, it does have interior walls. So if I were to go to hit in line, get in close, you can see inside, outside. So I'm going to select our glass body, go to faces. Um, so to select the interior wall, I just go to UL, select this loop, and then find at the top, Select that loop. And then if you go, uh, if you hit Shift C, you can look for a command. And the command we want is fill selection. I don't know why that switched to vertices. Go back to faces. And if I hold the Shift key and click here, it will fill the whole selection in between those two uh, ring selections I made. So now if all I have to do is Control C, click off of here, Control V, and now I've got just that selection. I want to use this to carve the shape of the container out of our volume measure. And to do that, I need to give this its own thickness. And so I'm just going to go with um, a simple cloth surface. So again, Alt key will make it the parent. 
of the thing you have selected and we're going to change our thickness. Uh, we're going to do a negative number. We're going to go for a huge number. Um, it doesn't really matter. We're just using this to cut away our uh, fluid. Um, so let's go ahead and bring all this stuff back so we can see what we're doing and drop this into our system. Uh, and of course, by default, um, it's going to have a be a union. We're going to set this to subtract. And there we go. So if I hide the kettle, so now you have a pretty robust fluid system. Some weird stuff there. I think I want some of this to be faster, so I'm going to set this to negative 30 instead of 20. And those really rise through. And I'm going to have our push apart just a little bit stronger. And I'm going to emit more. Let's say 80. Is that too many? That's too many. Don't do too many. We'll say 20. Cool. So again, and this is the beauty of uh, VDB, a lot of these weird, um, you know, fragmenting uh, polygons as a result of the collider uh, deformer um, are mostly uh, cleaned up once it's turned into a VDB. And it, honestly, just at that point, it just looks like little, you know, little splashes. And, you know, once you get some motion blur going, you know, it probably wouldn't look like anything. So for now, let's go ahead and give this guy a little bit more geometry. Let's say 50, 50. That'll just give us some more detail in the um, quote unquote simulation. There we go. See, we get a little bit more ripples going. Once again, go to our point builder, maybe make this a little bit more detailed. Um, and, you know, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and add an SDF smooth on top. Gaussian's a little too strong. I'm going to do median and set the voxel distance to one. It doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be a, a ton. So after that, I mean, all you really do is just apply some materials and, and you want to make sure you make this a child of the kettle itself so that when the kettle moves around, um, everything goes with it. Of course, uh, bearing in mind, these deformers kind of screw up your ability to move things. So turn those off. Then you can move your kettle around, turn them back on hit play, it'll snap back into place, go back to zero, and you're all good. So that's essentially uh, how to do the simulation. But before I completely end the tutorial, I did want to go over how I did some of the shading on the water, because it's more than just dropping on a glass shader. So we're just going to go ahead and make this material from scratch. So I'm going to go to Create Redshift Material Standard, and we're going to call this our water, and drop that onto our volume measure. And if I go ahead and boot up the render, uh -huh, of course, it just looks like gray sledge. So we're going to open up our material um, and select our RS standard uh, material node. And I mean, the first thing, of course, is to set the transmission all the way up to one. And that's going to give us uh, straight up water. Um, I have an extra light inside the kettle because I actually have a kettle that has a light built in and I thought it looked cool. For now, I'm going to turn it off. When dealing with uh, rapidly moving and changing water, it actually can help to have the roughness turned up a little bit. Maybe not too much, but 0.25 is probably good. So that way it's not perfectly clear. And then another thing that I think really helps is, you know, again, you have a bunch of micro bubbles inside this thing. Um, so I figure light would probably be scattering more inside this than it would, you know, say like a glass of ice water. So uh, one thing I like to do is um, change our scatter color to white and then turn, start turning up the depth. So this depth control is going to control how deep light can penetrate in the water. So by zero, default of zero means it can just pass through no problem. But at like 0.1, then it's only going to go 0.1 units in before um, you, know, you, you can't see through it. So we need to turn this way up. Because I want light to generally pass through here. <laughs> Weird render glitch. Just reload that. So now you can see we're actually seeing through it a little bit more. And it actually still is too low. So I'm going to bring this up to like 20. So it's not a lot, but there is some light scattering. And especially when you turn on that little internal light, you can see it just gives it a little bit more smokiness that I think implies, you know, hot water. Um, in fact, I might actually go ahead and turn the reflection roughness back down because now that we've got some actual scattering um, doing what this is trying to, you know, replicate, I don't like really need it. So yeah, now we got just like it's somewhat cloudy, but it's not like gross looking. So yeah, uh, it's a pretty specific thing. Some cases you probably prefer to use a flip fluid 
simulation, but you know, if you had something just kind of sitting on a desk in the background, I mean, you may not need to go through all that. And it's, uh, I think, pretty impressive that Cinema 4D can do a pretty robust uh, work with just a little bit of a uh, little bit of tweaking. So, so that's all for today, and I hope that's helpful to someone out there.